All right, so uh, instead of Photoshop, I took a still image from uh, the animation and I drew some notes that hopefully can help um, to illustrate some of the principles. A lot of those you can see are very repetitive. Gradient, 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 gradient. So gradient. So there's a lot of uh, repetitive stuff. Um, and I think this is not a complete list of things you're probably going to do, but it should be good to illustrate the principles that uh, I'll be using over and over to try and uh, add interest to the image. Alright, so let's get started with gradient since it's the change that I suggested the most. Um, in general, flat planes are not the most interesting thing to look at. And if you want to keep the viewer engaged, you usually want to try and add a little bit of uh, interest to your image. So usually adding uh, some gradients tends to help in breaking some of those flat planes. So I'm going to just create a new layer and I'm going to um, start creating gradients. And I'm going to be using uh, regular gradients like that and set this layer to multiply. So you can see I'm adding gradients to break up these uh, flat planes. And uh, I'm going to be creating new layers or even like, just duplicating them and just altering so that we can place gradients everywhere. Um, I took the liberty of going uh, on Google and researching some of the pictures uh, that are related to street fairs because I wanted to get a feeling of um, what this uh, what these places look like, and so this is these are some of the images that I found. So some interesting stuff that I noticed is that you know you can add more interesting materials to a set. You can add reflections. Uh, you can have gradients uh, that suggest where the light is coming from. You can have an interplay of natural light and artificial light. Um, you can suggest materials like wood or paint. Um, the material for the volcano could have you know a little bit of a shine, and might even have you know a different material um, to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, also, something interesting that you could notice is that every material, even those you wouldn't expect, have a certain amount of specular and reflection. So I think for the sake of making this image as interesting as possible, uh, and as you can see in the notes, I suggested adding reflectivity to some of the materials. Now, Maya software does not allow um, blurred reflections, so you kind of gonna have to um, find a way to cheat it. And what I found can help is to add um, a bump map to the um, to the image for the texture. And what that does is that it allows you to break up um, the the reflection a little bit. So we're gonna get into that in a second. So already with the gradients, the image tends to look a little bit more interesting. Um, something that I usually do when I want to double check an image is that I turn it into black and white. Uh, and that helps me to easily identify uh, issues. Like in this case, there's an issue because the value of these items is too similar. When you turn it to black and white, they kind of blend into each other. So something that we're probably going to end up doing is try to separate the value of these objects. Uh, also the volcano and that kind of blend, you can see that the values are very similar. Um, something else is that we don't have any sense of depth. This, before, like even without the gradients, before the gradients, it looks very, very flat. There's no sense of uh, depth. So I usually suggest adding some kind of pattern or texture to try and suggest that depth. Also, uh, while a vertical gradient definitely will help the shape of the volcano, um, one of the struggles of lighting is trying to push the shaping of objects. And in this case, you can see I'm creating um, a new layer set to multiply, and I'm going to be darkening the edges like that. So you see I'm adding a little bit of shape. And this is kind of very rough, so 
I'm not gonna refine it too much. Something that we saw in the reference pictures for the volcano is that there's a certain amount of specular to materials, and I think it would be interesting if we could um, add that. So I'm gonna create a new layer, set it to screen, and then I'm gonna kind of suggest a certain amount of specular. Um, and depending on the light source, which let's pretend it's gonna be some kind of uh, um, window or something. So what we can suggest is is specular by kind of adding a little bit of a, of a shine. So let me sample this color and then go ahead and kind of add a little bit of a specular hit around those. Um, it is painted really, really rough, so I wouldn't. Hopefully, the final outcome will be better. Um, yeah, maybe it shouldn't be too saturated. Maybe we can make it a little bit more neutral. Maybe not as prominent. But we'll figure it out in the software. Also, something else that I noticed we could do is add a little bit more interest to the volcano by adding an actual lava uh, surfacing material change. So I'm going to just go on to here and fill this with um, color. Let's make it red. And let's actually make it more saturated. Um, And the specular inside this shape, I'm actually gonna want to tint it so it's redder. Because some materials tend to have tinted speculars, so I think this helps. Alright, um, I think we can go a little bit darker with the shaping here. So I'm gonna duplicate it uh, and then adjust it. And again, I'm gonna tweak it. All right. Now to separate this plane, because um, you see when we turn this black and white, oops. When we turn this black and white, uh, this plane is kind of blend. So I'm gonna just go ahead and create an exposure level, and I'm gonna brighten the picture. Where is it? Instagram layer adjustment. Okay. So I'm gonna brighten it. And then in the mask I'm gonna invert it and then make sure that it only affects this plane. So I'm gonna fill that white and again this is kind of rough so I don't have the highest expectations for this plane totally but hopefully it will give us a good idea of what um, we are trying to achieve okay so you can see that well I try to do is separate these planes because separation of planes is one of the major uh, things that helps define what you're looking at. Um, also, something else <coughs> that is important is uh, break up these kind of uh, very straight lines, and this is one of the first things that you notice in an image when uh, it's CG. So everything is too perfect. Everything is too straight. So I think breaking this up a little bit will help. 
even breaking up those will help. So <clears throat> so it's not as perfect. All right, just add a little bit of variation. Uh, same thing for that um, for this chart. We want to make sure that it's not that perfect. Maybe there's uh, some imperfections right there. Maybe it's a little bent. All kind of stuff that we could do to add interest to it. Um, then of course the reflections. If you look at the notes, I suggested adding some reflections and some depth. The reflections will go a long way, I think, to already suggest a sense of depth, especially if we um, add textures to break up the reflections. I think they will convey some depth. But um, let me go ahead and add some fake reflections real quick. So let's see. So depending on what you want to do, the reflections will either brighten the image or darken it. And it really is up to you. Okay, and something that we should always um, consider is the Fresnel effect, meaning that reflections are more obvious at a glancing angle, which is why, if you see this layer, I'm painting out the bottom here, but I'm leaving that, so that when you, if you make it even more prominent, you can really see that the reflection should be a little bit more strong um, at a glancing ang angle. And actually, I'm going to colorize it a little bit so that it blends a little bit better. Um, something else we could do, let's see, let me take this out, okay. Uh, well in general I think when you look at all the reference pictures, um, there's a certain mood to all those pictures, like the palette here is very warm, the palette here is very cool, the palette here is very green, but when I look at this image, the palette is not um, united. There's a lot of different hues. There's like a bright red and a bright green, and usually that doesn't tend to happen. Uh, so, what I probably will do is try and light it so that um, the colors are a little bit more um, uniform. Um, so it may mean that I might pull back a little bit on the saturation and then I might overall try to color correct the image so that it's either more greenish or more bluish uh, but definitely try to rein in on, uh, on the color palette you know and um, let's see what else can we do gradient, break those things, break the specular or gradients, oh yeah so I noticed that <coughs> the text here is a little too close to the edge of the, the screen so something else we might try to do is uh, grab the text and move it down and also probably add a little bit of variation in texturing so we can add interesting cracks or interesting details anything to add interest to the image like something as simple as adding a specular hit on this button uh, or even showing one more plane will go a long way uh, to add depth to the image uh, because right now we might know that it's a cylinder, but it could be anything else because we don't know, we don't see the planes, we only see one continuous plane. Same thing for this uh, square. Uh, we don't get to see three planes, we only see two. So anything we can do to kind of bring those out with bevels or any imperfection will help to suggest the, the shape of these objects. Um, I'm probably gonna add more principle later on, but hopefully this helps for now.